All right, people, welcome back to the card review. So I know you guys got double on Tuesday because literally right after I on that day that it was the card review for Good and Evil and the Burning Abyss, they changed the text and made the card even more powerful. But uh, you know, I was discussing I in part one I left you guys with a cliffhanger and I was discussing about how people were you know maybe thinking about running the Good and Evil and the Burning Abyss without uh, running Malakota, you know, the actual monster that you were just running for, just for its second effect. And you're probably wondering, and you're probably thinking like, well, you know, how do you get this card to the graveyard if, you know, if it's in your hand, how do you, you know, in your deck, how do you get it to the graveyard without playing it? So, of course, Burning Abyss has the answer for that, and the answer to a lot of their problems, and just makes the deck so much more powerful that, you know, I don't even know what to do with it anymore, you know. You know, generally you would just, you would sit there and you would think about how to hit Burning Abyss. You know, on the previous ban list, the banish ban list prediction, you know, a ton of people were saying, you know, hit Fire like the 1, because if you hit Fire like the 1, it will lower the consistency of getting it, you know? You can mill with Dante, you can mill with Dante, you can mill with Dante, but, you know, there's a chance that, hey, you may not mill it to the graveyard, so, you know, we still won't have to worry about, you know, uh, getting hit with Fire Lake, you know, 24-7, you know? Like, if you know, if you get that one Fire Lake, then you, of course, can, you know, kind of touch yourself with Dante and do things like that, and the play wouldn't be dead. It would just be lowered consistency. But with cards like this, and with cards like Good and Evil, you know, I just don't know anymore. Alright, so this is Cagna, a branch of the Burning Abyss. It's a Dark Fiend effect, for level 3, 1500 attack, 300 defense, so 1500 attack's reasonable. You know, Mathematician is that strong, and, you know, he does okay. So, there you go. Same Burning Abyss shit, you know, control of monster has to not burn, bitch, destroy, blah, 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 because you're not spawning traps, special on cards. It's own individual effect from the graveyard age. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can send one Burning Abyss spell slash trap card from your deck to the graveyard. And as soon as I saw this, I was like, before, before even good and evil got, any, you know, the text changed from, you know, adding a, a Burning Abyss card. This was just, this just blew my mind. I was like, so what's the point of hitting Fire Lake down to one? When you could just simply just summon, send this guy a graveyard, send the Fire Lake, and then Dante, and then Dante, get your Fire Lake back, you know? Like, I was thinking, like, alright, if we hit Fire Lake, it would lower the consistency of Fire Lake, you know, you mill and mill with Dante, you may or may not get it, so, you know, you know, you can keep trying, but you may not get it, you know? This, this guarantees it, you know? This, this is gonna guarantee that you're gonna get that Fire Lake to the graveyard, and that Fire Lake can be returned back to your hand through Dante. So that's how freaking powerful it is, you know? And not only that, spell slash trap burning abyss. So of course you already know what you can send. You can send good and evil into burning abyss. So you know that's why I actually put in the title part two of good and evil and burning abyss. But yet I didn't talk about it. Of course, good and evil and burning abyss. We have cards for costs. That's the thing. You know, simply send it from your hand. Like it's not that hard. You know. You literally were like, oh, well, I opened up with uh, Good and Evil and the Burning Abyss. I'm not running Malakota, but I opened up with Good and Evil and Burning Abyss and uh, uh, a Phoenix Woman Blast or a Comet Pack. All right, set it. Set the Phoenix Woman Blast. Pass to your opponent. You know, whenever your opponent does something or even during your opponent's end phase. During your opponent's end phase, activate Phoenix Woman Blast. Pitch the Good and Evil and Burning Abyss. Spin that on top of the deck. During the main phase, except the turn to the the graveyard. It was sent to the graveyard during your opponent's turn. So just draw during your turn. Activate it. Banish it. Go ahead. Discard a Burning Abyss monster, search for a Burning Abyss card, that will go off. Like, I'm, look, 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 listen to the plays that I'm doing here. Look, Phoenix, pitch, spin something back. Uh, freaking Good and Evil and Burning Abyss, banish, discard a freaking. It doesn't matter. Discard a freaking. Uh, uh, a fucking. Sir, sure, sir. Discard, sir. Go ahead, search for Violet. Sir, summon Graph. Summon another Burning Abyss. Set the Fire Lake that you just searched for with freaking uh, Good and Evil and Burning Abyss. Bam, there you go. Play, set up, done. Like, so fucking good. And this guy is, is just is even better. So literally, <laughs> you can go ahead and just, you know, pitch him, you know? So instead, let's say that you opened up with Phoenix Woman Blast and, and Kagna. So Phoenix Woman Blast, send Kagna, spend something back. Kagna, send uh, Good and Evil and Burning Abyss, draw. My, except for the turn that I was sent, banish it, pitch, search, plus, plus, set the fire lake, blow up your opponent, plus, five, go up, like, why Konami, why, you made this deck, it, it, it's done, it's done. Literally, the Burning Abyss support in Secrets of Eternity has literally blown the deck out of the water, like, done, like, it's, it's done, it's over, it's over, you know, 
you were thinking that maybe some other decks would even have a chance or even a little bit of potential to be even relevant in the meta, you know? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Burning this is clearly a top, you know? Shadals, you're getting fucking Nef Shadal fusion and freaking, you know, Wendigo. Ooh, you know? But Burning Abyss are getting the tits, like straight up the tits. Like, I don't even know what to do with Burning Abyss anymore because literally the deck is so damn strong. Like, it, and it just keeps getting stronger and stronger and stronger. So there you go. There you go. I literally just told you plays uh, how, how you can run the deck without Malakota, but still run good and evil in Burning Abyss. You don't fuck Malakota. He's okay. He's okay. But is he necessary? Absolutely not. You know, with with Karma Cut and Phoenix Woman Blast, maybe if you want to throw in some freaking, um, you know, some uh, Mass Change Second and, you know, Mass Change Second yourself and the freaking Dark Law on your opponent, you want to run that, go ahead. You know, there you go. Those are your pitchers. So those, that's your discard outlets. Go ahead and pitch the good and evil and burning abyss during your opponent's turn. Your next main phase, except for the turn of Scent. There you go. Banish that. Discard the Burning Abyss monster, search for Fire Lake, the Burning Abyss monster will go off, summon that. All you, literally, all you need to do is just summon, normal summon, one more Burning Abyss monster, set the Fire Lake, pass. Because you're about to Fire Lake that ass and fucking hit them for fucking three. Like, come on, like, hit them for three and you go, what, plus five? Like, it, it, it's over, it's over, like, why? Why? They made this deck so fucking powerful, you know? Compared to freaking a Lich, Cow Cab, freaking Rubric, and Virgil, they don't even compare to what Burning Abyss got here. You know? So, you know, as soon as uh, the cards get on freaking Dead Pro, I will be using the deck and trying what I'm talking about on Daily Duels. But, God, we are just looking at just Burning Abyss being just so strong. So strong, you know? And you, have, and you know, it's just like, oh, well, you know, you know, Dark Law, he's gonna be so good, you know, Dark Law is gonna be so great, as, as if, as if Burning Abyss can't play Dark Law, you know? As if I can't, if I, as if I literally can't go, alright, summon a freaking uh, Burning Abyss, Mash Chain second, freaking Pitch Skarm, turn that freaking Burning Abyss monster into Dark Law, you know? And if it's anything that I care about going off, like, you know, alright. Summon Kagna, right? Summon Kagna. You know, Summon Kagna, set Super Poly. Pass, pass to you. All right, you, you know, activate something to search. Now, let's say you uh, play, uh, you know, Scout, all right? You play Scout. You know, I'm gonna go Mass Change second. I'm gonna send Kagna, I'm gonna discard Skarn. I'm gonna special summon Dark Claw. As soon as you go ahead and get your search on, I'm gonna pick. Uh, Skarn's gonna go after an end phase. Uh, Kagna, go ahead and go off. Go ahead and send me uh, Good and Evil and the Burning Abyss. So now I got Good and Evil and Burning Abyss ready to go off during my next turn. I got a guaranteed, I got a search upcoming for me with uh, Skarm, and I have Dark Law on the field. So for your scout, when you go ahead and search, I'm gonna banish something. You know? So, you know, just ridiculous. Ridiculous. Like, this deck is too good. I don't know what to say about Burning Abyss anymore. Like, and Konami just keeps doing it. Keeps doing it, you know. And you know, first they were they were up there, you know. They were really strong, you know. They like you know they played you know a lot of the cost cards and they were doing really well and Dante and everything was fine. Then next set, fucking Fire Lake comes out and just blow it out of the water and that becomes even stronger. Now you got this. Now you got a searchable Fire Lake. You got searchable freaking uh you know running running run, who who would what what deck in the right mind has a ritual? Look, look, look this is how ridiculous. What deck in the right mind has a ritual, runs the ritual spell, but doesn't run them? That's like that's like Gitsky's running all the ritual spells, but running no Gitsky monster. Like that's literally how crazy it is. But Burning Abyss can pull it off just fine, just fine. Like it's craziness. It's craziness. You know. So I, I just don't. I don't know. I don't know. This plus good and evil in the Burning Abyss. Throwing some Farfetch to get rid of you know problem cards and you know problem uh, monsters. You know. We we are just looking at Burning Abyss just kicking some butt, you know. Now the question is, is that whether this will be tier zero or not? I know someone commented and said, you know, will this, you know, will this make Burning Abyss tier zero? And the thing with tier zero is the definition of tier zero. So to be tier zero, uh, my definition anyway, and you know, uh, a pretty agreed uh, definition for a lot of the uh, community of Yu-Gi-Oh is uh, you have to be the top deck, which Burning Abyss of course are, but you have to be. 50% or higher of the meta. So you have to be higher than half, right? 
The problem with with that, that is that Burning Abyss aren't fifty percent of the meta. I mean, they're definitely up there, but you know, you got Burning Abyss. You have some people playing Cleese. You got some people playing Shadow. You got a little bit of people playing Stone Knight. You're gonna have people picking up Mermails. You're gonna, have, I mean, playing Mermail. You have people picking up the new Master. You're gonna have people playing the new Nefclaw. So you know, it's pretty. I mean, it's not you know like the most diverse format, but you know, there's other decks. You know, you got know, people playing the Rogue a little bit of Evil Swarm. You know. So, you know, it's not like, hands down, tier 1, burn your best play it, or you just get your ass trounced, you know, you, you have, you have some tier 1s, you have some tier 1.5s, hey, you may even see some tier 2s in there, but, uh, for right now, burning a bit, uh, for right now, as the way they stand right now, before Secrets of Eternity, are not tier 0. Now, will this, uh, you know, this new support make them tier 0? Only time will tell, you know, if the set comes out and people pick up burning a bit, you know, and, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, easy, easy way to, you know, ensure that Burning Abyss becomes tier zero. It's all Konami has to do is literally just reprint uh, Dante in a, an easy and convenient way for everybody to get their hands on. Because Dante is the expensive card in that deck. You know, Dante is like what, seventy, eighty dollars for one Dante, and, you, and three is mandatory. Three is mandatory. You know, I'm working on my ban list prediction for April. You know, of course I can't predict what Konami's gonna do, so I'm gonna predict what I'm gonna kind of combine it with what I think Konami's gonna do, with what I should think they do, and what you know, uh, you know, not too hard of a hit, but still a practical hit. So you know, you know, even that, even though I, even you know the format just began like what a week ago, I'm already working on my next ban list prediction because you know it's you know, and I'm just looking at the decks. I'm playing the top decks. I'm looking at the top decks. I'm looking at what wins. I'm looking at you know, and I'm just trying to do accordingly. But you know, when, when it, it, the problem is that you know. You know, it used to be back in the past where, you know, a particular deck would be generally powerful because of one card or one major play. And, you know, you could point a finger at something and, you know, you would definitely point the finger at it and it would be the correct point the finger at, right? You know? You know, it, it, you know, there's no argument, you know, when Dragon Rulers were in their prime that, you know, sure, you know, the Dragon Rulers should have got hit in the ridge first place. But, you know, the stupid card back then was, of course, you know, Super Reju. You know, that was the card that was stupid. You know, uh, you know, you know what? Dragonfly was the stupid one. You know, you just, you know, you just point fingers. You point fingers. You know, but with Burning the Bass, you know, you you could you could point fingers until the cows come home, but it's still you know hard to really pinpoint you know what will resolve the power creep of the deck and how immense the power is. You know, you know, I've seen a ton of people say you know Tour God should be at one. All right. To have got it one, as if I can't go, you know, special summon and burning bass, normal summon and burning bass, X the Dante, detach mill, summon, set fire lake, hit your ass and, and fire lake, rinse and repeat, you know? Like I don't need to have got for that. Tour got helps, it's a one card instead of you know two cards, but it helped. You know? It helped, but it's not completely necessary, you know? You know? And if push comes to shove, I could just literally run crane crane. Crane crane is literally just tour god except set from the deck, it's from the graveyard, but I can still pull up the same exact plate. So you could just throw in some crane cranes in there, you know, you know, I think, you know, hitting, you know, Dante, Dante, Dante might actually be a pretty good hit, you know, if you hit Dante, then, you know, you lower the consistency of the ARCs, I've seen, you know, I've seen some people go into multiple Dantes on first turn, you know, so it might, you know, lower the consistency and promote doing that, and then, you know, maybe if we put Dante to two, maybe you would have to take that Dante and put the other Dante back, and Dante put Dante back, Dante put Dante back, so you don't run out of Dantes, because if you run out of Dantes, you know, you're not looking too hot, and, you know, of course, you got a graph to cover you, but uh, then Dante won't have any materials, the Dante's not going to be any stronger than a thousand, because it doesn't have any materials to detach to, you know, mill to gain the attack, and, uh, you know, you know, if we put Dante to one, then, you know, straight up, you know, that's it, that's, that's, that's the punch in the gut, I don't think Konami's gonna go to that extreme in April, you know, especially since they've done nothing to hit Burning Abyss, you know, generally it takes two hits to take down the deck, generally it's like, hit, and then smack, you know, whereas they tap their deck on the, on the head, and then they slap the deck across the face, so, you know, uh, you know, for, for this list, uh, for the April list, I'll probably just tap on the head, so, you know, I probably think, uh, you know, just off, just off the top of my mind, just off, just off, straight off, off the top of the noggin of what I think they'll probably do. They'll probably put Tour Guide down to two to test that. They'll probably put Dante down to two, test that. 
and they'll probably put uh, Fire Lake down to one because they clearly see the problem and see by putting it down to one lower the consistency, see what the looping is, and you know if it continues to persist to be a problem, they'll just ban it just like what they did with Super Poly. But that's just literally off the top of my mind right now at the beginning of January. Of course, I gotta do more research and see how the deck progresses on meta. But you know, I I say if that was literally the hit that Konami would give Burning Abyss, would Burning Abyss still be really great? Oh, definitely, definitely, it'd still be the tip. But you know. C could you see a harder hit the list after that? Almost definitely, you know? It would be actually be set precedence, you know? We could simply see cards move up and down, you know? And it seems like TCG kind of Konami likes to take things slow, you know? They're, you know, sometimes, you know, they just take something and just throw it up, but, you know, it seems like, you know, they're a little bit cautious and wary with it, you know? They could have just outright banned Super Poly, but they wanted to see that one first, and they saw that one, apparently it was still too broken, so they decided to go ahead and ban it. You know, you could do the same thing with Fire League, because the deck was good, but it wasn't stupid like it is now with Fire Lake. You know, now you got cards that can search for Fire Lake, and now you're just asking for troubles, you know. You know, and it's kind of hard to, you know, point the finger at the other cards, you know. Like, is it really necessary to, you know, hit, you know, Cadna and hit, you know, Good and Evil and hit Dante and hit all these cards when it's Fire Lake that's the problem? Then you just hit Fire Lake, you know. You know, it's, it's, you know, you know, you only need one bad apple to spoil the bunch, you know. It only took, you know. Super Poly's been at 3 for how long? Heroes used the shit out of Super Poly, but it was still okay in the book. It wasn't until Shadal until all of a sudden Super Poly's banned, you see? So, you know, it's, it takes one to happen and spoil a bunch, and sometimes it is your card, and sometimes it isn't your card, you know? Super Ridgeoo was at 3 for forever, until, of course, you know, Dragon Rollers broke the hell of it and got it banned, you know? So, uh, you know, one bad apple, and I think, you know, Burning the Base are gonna spoil their apple, and I tell you, their apple is definitely Fire Lake, you know? I think that, you know, uh, depending on how, you know, how, what Konami wants to do with Burning Abyss and how hard they want to hit it, I think that, you know, Dante the 2, Tour Guide the 2, and uh, Fire Lake the 1 will probably be, you know, a practical hit for it, and a practical first hit for Burning Abyss, but uh, deck, the deck is just so damn powerful that I, I'm, I'm, I'm stunned, I'm stunned. You know, just, just the combos, the plays, the floatiness, the one-ups, just everything. This deck is just so good. Like, you you would think it's, it's TCG, you know, it's just like... <sighs> what if OCG had this deck, you know? What would they do with it? You know, they're a much more aggressive, you know, kind of, you know, thing, kind of game over there in OCG land. Here in TCG, we're not as aggressive, you know. We'll hit you in background until the cows come home, and that's why, you know... Deck the second is being such a boss ass bitch because right now we're so reliant on back row in the competitive circuit in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh right now that you know simply a nice juicy Deck the dropping it down and locking down my back row you know like a walking world decree and you know I I, mean, I love Royal decree so Deck the you know she's my number two bitch in my heart so you know I'm definitely liking her but you know it's just this that this deck I don't you know so like I said go ahead and tell me what you guys think about, I forgot that we were discussing Cagna, I literally went off about Burning Abyss, but this card doesn't help, this card doesn't help, so, you know, with Cagna combined with your Hand Pitchers, you know, your Phoenix Woman Blast, your Karma Cuts, you know, your, uh, your Ducky Bricks if you want to play but not really, you'll probably play, you know, Mass Chain second and turn into a Dark Wall because you fucking can, uh, you know, with this, if I'm, you know, pitching, uh, uh, you know, good and evil in the burning abyss during your opponent's turn, so, you know, except the turn that it is sent to the graveyard during the next main phase, which will be your next turn, you can go ahead and banish the good and evil in burning abyss, go ahead and pitch a burning abyss monster, search for fire link, that burning abyss monster will go off some, and, you know, preferably it would be Graffer Sir, and then that burning abyss monster, Graffer Sir, will go off summon you a burning abyss monster, then you can just simply just summon a burning abyss monster, set the fire lake, and uh, hit your opponent with fire lake, then go plus, then go plus, then go plus, so, Literally, it's just, it's all, it's all, it's all just golden. This deck is just the best. I don't know. You know, I'm kind of shocked, you know. So, let's see if it does become tier zero. Alright, so, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I haven't sat here, rented, and talked about this on Car Review since Soul Charge. So, there you go. We got a long episode. Alright, so, I hope that you guys enjoyed this card review. Don't dislike my video just because you dislike Burning Abyss. But, uh, tell me what you guys think about Burning Abyss. Just tell me what you guys think. It's it's getting too ridiculous. All right, guys. So thank you guys for all the support, and I will see you guys next Tuesday. Car review. We're gonna look at something else, not burning abyss related, because I'm done. I'm tired of burning abyss. So uh, look forward to that. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.